So hello again, and here we are again, and um, this time what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at uh, dodging and burning, which was uh, a request by somebody that watches these videos. So, um, you know, we always like to try and uh, deliver what people ask for. So if you ask for something, then we'll try and deliver it. And somebody uh, a couple of weeks ago um, asked if we could do something on um, dodging and burning. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. Before we get into that, if you do like what we're doing, you do like our videos, please hit the subscribe button, which is... Uh, just down there somewhere, I think it's in that little corner. Um, please also leave a comment down below, which is down below, straight down there. And there's a, there's a like button as well there somewhere, I think it's back there. Um, click it and then see what it does um, and uh, engage with us because it, uh, it makes making these videos uh, much more pleasurable when we know that uh, the people are watching and people are engaging with us and, and we're delivering the content that, um, that you want to see. So back to dodging and burning. And, the, the request really was, uh, was was how to dodge and burn in Photoshop, and um, you know, there are a number of ways to do that. But what I'm going to show you today is uh, is, is two ways. Um, and I'm going to show you Lightroom and Photoshop because I think the two go together very much these days. Um, but both of these methods are non-destructive, and they will not break your photographs. They will not ruin your photographs. So if you don't like what you've done afterwards, you know, not only five minutes afterwards, a week later, two weeks later, a year later, you can go back to that image and remove the uh, the dodging and burning that you've that you've done um, during this process today. So, um, a really nice, easy, and interesting way to uh, to apply dodging and burning to Photoshop. So let's, let's not talk about it anymore. Let's turn around and uh, let's uh, let's start looking at the computer. So here we are. We're in uh, we're in Lightroom to start, and. Um, and I've got a picture of these two boats. I've, I've kind of cropped the image. I've done a little bit of editing already, but uh, when I look at it, this image, I just feel that this this first boat is maybe a little bit too bright, and and maybe there's a little bit of too much darkness in this second boat. So I just want to um, to bring them out. So the first thing we're going to going to do is head over into the develop module, and uh, uh, we're, we're, we've done that already by hitting this uh, this D button. Now over here on the right hand side, so we we have all our normal kind of. Uh, tools here for, um, sorry that was already opened, uh, we've got our normal tools here for editing the uh, the image and as you can see I've, I've made a few adjustments there already. But over here we have this um, spot adjustment tool and this is what we're going to use for um, for dodging and burning. So we're going to hit that button first and uh, the first thing we can see is a whole bunch of adjustments that we can make and what we're interested in, in looking at is is exposure. Now there is a pre a preset here. If we click on the where it says custom there, there is the preset there for, for dodging and burning. Um, so let's take this first boat first and maybe darken it down a little bit. And you'll see when we hit darken, then what it's done is all these settings have remained absolutely on zero, apart from one exposure, and it's dropped that down a third of a stop. Is that going to be enough for this image? I don't know. Let's have a look. So. Any adjustments we make now, when we click and move our mouse, it's going to start painting that adjustment onto this image. Um, you can see um, our mouse, which is kind of, I just put it on my cloud there so you can see it a bit clearer. Um, and it's got a cross in the middle and some rings around it. If we, if we scroll our scroll wheel on our mouse down, it goes smaller and up, it goes bigger. So if we're going to have a nice sort of biggish brush um, for this, um, and then we're just going to move onto the boat, and we're going to start, it's going to start painting. And as you can see, those, those bits of darkness starting to appear already. Key thing with this, as I was once told, was if you can see the adjustment straight away, then you're putting too much on. So let's just put some on there and uh, have a look at what that looks like. So if we come back over here, oh look, I've got a, a message about pizza delivery from the Pizza Hut. Fantastic, let's delete that. Um, so if we go back to our exposure, we see that's a third of a stop. And if we now start to move that, because we're going to adjust that as we wish, and take it down, we can start to see a lot of darkness, far too much darkness in that boat. Um, and consequently, we just push it back. And I think for that, for that image, probably about there doesn't look too bad. Yeah, there. And we've got, you can see we've got that little blob, and that little blob with a circle in it means that that's where the active adjustment adjustment is. Okay, so if I just uh, click that, get rid of it, and then this is what I do. I think there's probably a better way of doing that. Uh, we can hit the new button, um, uh, which I, <laughs> I never do. 
Um, this time I'm going to go the other way, so I'm going to go into the lighten. So I'm going to hit on the where it says burn, I'm going to select dodge, which is lighten. And I'm going to, once again, I've got my brush, and this time I want to just sort of stroke away in this area. Just press my button down on my mouse and just move the mouse around a little bit, not too much. And I just want to brighten that area up just a little bit on the front of that boat. And then maybe under this sticky out e fin thing, whatever it's called on the side of a boat, key leaf, I don't know, stabilizer, whatever it is, we'll put a little bit more light under there. Now it doesn't really look like we've done that much, but we have. Uh, and once again, if we if we click on this um, this exposure button and just drag it to the right, we can we can actually see where we've we've made those. You know that's that's too much, but uh, let's just bring it back down and uh, and push it to about I would say about there. So that's point uh, seven of a stop, two stops, um, or thereabouts. Um, we can see the effect we've we've had as with all of these. Um, uh, adjustments once we can we've got one of those little toggle switches and we see it down here so uh, if we hit the toggle switch and that'll turn the adjustment off we can see this boat gets darker this boat so this boat gets darker this boat gets lighter let's me turn it back on for you so you can see the adjustment starting to go on there so that's dodging and burning in Lightroom and obviously we're using the same tool you can change a whole bunch of things like white whiteness and blackness levels um, shadows highlights contrast uh, color spaces all sorts of things but uh, for me, uh, in, this, in this, this video, we just looked at dodging and burning, which is totally just uh, focusing on exposure. Now, the second way we said we could do this was non-destructively in Photoshop. So let's just go to Photoshop, where I should have the same image. There we go. The same image, all loaded in Photoshop and ready to go. Oh, I've just clicked out of it then. That's silly me. And uh, it's now a bit bigger. Take it to the top. So there we go. So what we're going to do in Photoshop is that there, there are dodge and burn tools um, around here, uh, which, you know, to be to be completely honest, I never use because once you start using these, it is actually changing the image irreversibly. So it's not something that I, that I tend to use. The way I do it is um, this is my background layer here. I just create a new layer straight on top of the background layer or straight on top of the layer that I want to dodge and burn on. I make sure that my uh, brush colors are black and white because there what we're going to do is we're going to start pushing black and white into this image now to make it darker or lighter um, and we're going to do something quite quite interesting with this layer that we just created you'll notice the default capacity for a layer is 100 percent so if i just get a brush i just hit b and uh, and do and go onto black and just draw a line across there you can see um, i am making it darker but that's because i'm pushing um, I'm just pushing black onto that image. Um, now at the moment, uh, that's not what the, the way we want to do it. So uh, let's just take that out. And what we are going to do is we're going to change the opacity of this layer down to, let's say, 50%. Okay. We're also going to change. Oops, sorry. We're also going to change the layer type to an overlay layer. What that'll do is that'll allow the base layer beneath it to, to show through and to come through. And when we put something in that layer, it will kind of blend the two a little bit. Now, when we use a brush, and I use B to get a brush, um, the opacity of the brush, um, I've got that set around about 25, 30%, um, so that we're not really overpowering the image. We're just putting small amounts of, uh, of, of darkness and lightness into that image. What that now enables us to do is if we make sure we've got this, this black selected and we've got our brush selected, we need a really nice soft brush, something like that. Yeah. And then we maybe get a nice, make it a little bit bigger using the, uh, the square bracket keys. And what we're going to do now is I'm just going to once again drag across there. And you can see as we're doing that, we are immediately starting to change with the, the the darkness of that of that boat on that side and uh, I've probably done a bit too much there but um, we've done that in that area so that's now darker similarly if we now flick to a white brush um, and we can do that by clicking the little arrow the little tool ended arrow here or you can do that with the X key and if I just press X you'll see that that move in that, that corner there so if we go to white we can then come over here I probably want a slightly smaller brush on this on this one so let's take that down with the with the with the square arrow arrow key, and uh, once again I'm just brushing over here, 
and you can see straight away that that's making this boat on this side a little bit lighter that's probably a bit too much there but it's uh, it's 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 good to just demonstrate that for you um, and once again under this keel let's just put some some light in there and uh, that's probably that's probably will do for now if we come to this layer here um, that we just created if we turn that layer off you'll be able to see that that's what we started with and turning that layer on that's what we've ended up with the end now the reason I quite like this opacity is if I made a change and maybe I thought it was maybe not quite strong enough I can change the opacity of that layer so I could actually take a little bit out and just dumb it down a little bit or I could make it a bit stronger um, and bring it back in but I, I, can't, I kind of normally leave that about 50% just so I have got the ability just to move things around a little bit afterwards um, but of course we haven't made any changes to that base image that the background layer is still exactly as we found it um, because all our adjustments are on this this layer layer one as it is called at the moment so I hope that helped I hope that was a really simple demonstration on how I um, dodge and burn there are other ways of doing it. there are many many ways of doing dodging and burning as uh, as most people will tell you that's how I do it um, I hope it helps and uh, if it does then please subscribe down below um, and, uh, and come back and see us in the next video but thanks for watching this time thank you very much